Welcome to another CDVV book on tape. Disclaimer, I do not own the Thunderbirds or Stargate SG-1. I write this fiction purely for my readers and my enjoyment. I make no profit by posting this fiction. This is the disclaimer for the whole story. I'm putting in here at the beginning so everyone is aware that these characters other than my Takra symbiote are not mine. It also saves me repeatedly typing a disclaimer for every chapter. A rant about the AMV and anime communities. Writing about the communities of both anime and music videos that follow the anime is a tricky business to discuss. It is easy to piss off and piss an anime fan off, and definitely easy to piss off an editor of an AMV. First, allow me to explain what this long rant is. This is a rant about how the minds of editors and fans of anime work. There is a level of psychological problems going on with the communities of editors and anime fans, and I've noticed it. Therefore, I decided to write about it. If you don't think, if you don't like that or think I'm wrong, then I advise you to write your own. I have broken both sides of the arc. What argument? <laughs> I've broken both sides of the argument into two groups: the anime fans and the anime music video fans and editors. Basically, I want to talk about what people do in a reaction to something else or what goes in their minds. Anime music videos. One of the most basic principles of AMVs is the term. Horde. Okay. <laughs> a For the horde! <laughs> a basic <laughs> idea to whoring is that something has been used by so many people that it is horde, and therefore a bad idea to use it. The problem with this concept, however, is that while anime such as Bleach, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, and One Piece are horde, the only un unoriginal thing about it is the editor. It's actually a bit humorous, because the only person whoring is the whore. Well, in this case, is the editor, not the anime. There are a lot of great scenes from the anime I mentioned that are never used by the editor and rarely see the light of day. Another form of whoring is effect whoring. This is where the video looks extremely messy because of how many effects were used, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you intend to whore effects, be prepared to be shot down a lot. Effect whoring is looked down on in the AMV community. Another problem with the editing community is the idea that by editing you are somehow less of a person socially. I have gotten comments saying I'm a loser because I like editing and I because I sit a lot. <laughs> this is such a stupid and pointless argument that I have given up even arguing over it. Editing was never a contest to see who could be more social, and I'm not sure where that idea came from. Raw editing versus effect editing. You didn't use that effect the way I want you to. This statement is heard so much, and it's very annoying to see. There are many, many different ways of manipulating and applying effects, and not everyone does it the same way. When an editor steps on another video for using an effect the wrong way, it just becomes a complete mess. Raw editing has become a form of editing that is looked up to. For some reason, it's hard to do, and people think that if you edit raw, you must be a good editor. This, however, is complete bullshit. Think of raw editing as the baby steps and effects as running in track. What? <laughs> you can be on that track and attempt to run it, but that doesn't mean you will win the race. You have to train, practice, run on a treadmill, and learn the baby steps until you... No, you... What? How does he order this completely wrong? <laughs> just, just, just keep going. <laughs> Until you've gotten a good distance mark. Then when your body is fully prepared, then when you are body is fully prepared, then you run the track and hopefully win that race. But what happens if you never try track? What happens if all you do is run on that treadmill? You get bored. You'd never get anywhere. <laughs> keep going. Just... Keep. Just, just. It works the same way with editing raw and editing effects. If you jump start into effects too fast, you'll overdo it most of the time and not make the kind of video that people enjoy watching. Instead, you should begin with just simple and basic clips. Simple and subtle wins the race. When you finally got emotions and timing and conceptual editing down, then it's good to go forward and edit effects. You'll find that editing has become a lot easier for you and you can stand tall as an editor rather than attempting to hide you're an effect horde, you are effect horde AMV. <laughs> AnimeMusicVideos.org I'd like to call it the problem rather than the org at times. This large community was built from scratch, shoots down new and upcoming editors through trolling, flaming, dissing, and any other way you can think of. 
Chica Boom, an editor who is known for her editing her way, was shot down and trolled straight off org, and has been known to be quite straightforward about her opinions and views on the org and editing as a whole. Org has been known to shoot down videos with biased or mean opinions and are usually quite elitist and egotistical. The reason it's the problem to me is basically because no one does anything. No one has attempted to stand up and fix it. Instead, they act like nothing is wrong and don't attempt to help out. The few that are do that the few that do are usually trolling in a completely different way or just trying to be nice. Some of the nice, uh, nicer editors on the org are Shinny04 and all of Re-Evolution Studios. People go to amvs.org thinking they will find a nice and accepting community, only to be blatantly pushed away and looked down on. It puts a very negative image on anime music video editors. YouTube. YouTube is a mess. There is no better way to describe the editing community on YouTube. Basically, this is how YouTube works. <gasps> said famous editors edit said famous editor edits a popular AMV with rare anime or just a good source and a catchy song. Editors who are subscribed to that said famous editor are then inspired and edit with the same song and possibly the same anime. Then all hell breaks loose and everyone edits those same sources. It's basically a whole sperm bank. What the fuck? A sperm bank? <laughs> of random videos by bland editors. The main problem is the editing community on YouTube is that it is solely based on popularity and not skill. Because of the uh, wait, hold on, I lost my place. Okay, there are several incredible editors who are not known due, due to the simple fact that no one knows about them. Good good point. Popularity is based on what anime you use, what song, and how many people want to watch it. If you use unpopular anime, then you'll have fewer subs, which means you're less known. The issue at hand is that because of this, editors attempt to copy said famous editor, but he may not be as great as people think. Therefore, editing becomes less than what it could be. Another issue with YouTube is the commenting system. Comments range from awesome to gay. Go org looks down on these comments, although it's much better than the way they treat their members, in my opinion. YouTube can also work like this. Said anime releases a new episode without with an epic battle scene. Said famous editors who are subbed or watch the anime then go on to edit said episode. Said subscribers then edit the said anime episode with almost no original concepts or ideas to make it any different from anyone else's editing with the episode and then it becomes a sperm bank gig again. Also when something is horrid and is no longer considered something valid to use which is of course untrue, see the horrid section of this rant, the editors who are really good at editing refuse to edit with it but the really bad editors tend to use it nonetheless. Thus instead of a good and original editing being done it's the editors or editors that aren't very good who are editing with the said episode. Then, of course, the org disses YouTube for having bad and unoriginal editing. The drama is catastrophic. YouTube also has an ego problem, possibly even worse than that of the orgs. People assume that having many subs makes you a better editor, but on the contrary, it's the editing that makes an editor. This should be common knowledge, but it appears no one can figure it out. Another problem is social status. YouTube is mostly taken by editors from age from 9 to 20. He just pulled that number out of his ass. Anyone older than that is a member of the org and has a social life. Again, editing has nothing to do with you having a girlfriend, going to school, getting a job, and living your life. That's your business and will most likely never impact anyone, but if someone says you need, need those things, remember. He or she is an editor, too, and probably a teenager. They probably don't have those things either. There's also the problem of people's attitudes towards new editors who are just learning. Many people refuse to give out song or help a newbie because they hate noobs or are just mean enough to do so. Noobs will mimic this behavior later on and then become mean people due to the community's influence on them. AMV News. This is a Russian website dedicated to hosting AMVs. While it is very difficult to navigate if you do not understand Russian, which is almost all Americans... The website does not does have a few positive points. The first positive thing is the ability to link to YouTube, the org, etc., and not have to upload directly from your computer. Another nice thing about AMV News is you can upload and people watch it, even without you posting it on the forums, unlike the org, where unless you post it to the forums, chances are no one will care or watch your AMV. The main issue I have found, other than the fact that without Google Translator, AMV News would be useless to the majority of Americans is the critics. These people are mean to those who aren't in their editor hot list. If you didn't make an AMV with their song, anime, taste, or are not their friend, then they will purposely put you in a bad category or rate you really low. Their points are easily debated as biased, harsh, and just plain mean. A cross con. The newbie contest the newbie noob contest for noobs. A cross con is an excuse to poop out as many quote, original, unquote, After Effects video as possible. Noobs who just learned how to use After Effects will almost always attempt to enter this all-too-popular contest and almost always fail. The winner of the contest is usually a famous editor or someone who actually knows how to edit with After Effects. Common effects that are used are Twitch or camera tricks. Bleach and Naruto are popular can Canada anime for a cross con. The Noobs. The main issue I see with the newbie editors is their lack of effort or motivation. What's the song? 
What do you edit with? Where can I get After Effects? All answered by Google or Bing or any other perfectly good search engine. The song lyrics are easily obtained and then entered into Google. The program should be obvious depending on the video's effects, timing, and quality. However, if needed, then asking is fine. Where to get certain programs is easy and fast. Just type it in Google and you're done. Also, people never try things on their own. They'll come to me or other editors for help with very simple things like how to split a clip. Things they could easily figure out on their own. When I first started editing, I never asked for anyone's help unless I really needed it. Instead, I watched tutorials, watched AMVs that used the same effect or technique I wanted to do, and attempted to do it just like them. Eventually, I became so good at doing this that I was ripping AMVs almost perfectly. <laughs> I now can practice editing to, by trying to replicate techniques in Vegas, and then manipulating it so it's more of a custom thing than I can use later. This all took a lot of effort and motivation on my part, but it was totally worth it in the end, and I've never stopped benefiting. New editors also tend to expect too much and give very little. I will have a new editor come up to me, not even say hello, and just ask for stuff. It's extremely rude and shows how little effort they put out. Pros. The original concept of pro was that it meant a good editor or someone who was on top of all the rest. It quickly became a noob term. Basically, people said that you couldn't be pro because you're not paid to make AMVs. You're not professional. However, I believe in using the term to mean proficient or a good or decent editor. The idea is being used more often, but is still a noob term to use, unfortunately. Pros tend to be creative and original, mask a lot, edit decent raw AMVs, or have a lot of subs. They are quality, is also good, extremely good usually, and they use After Effects or Premiere. Pros are also no for submitting to ACrossCon or other big conventions slash contests and get famous faster that way. Anime. In some ways, the anime community is much better than the AMV community. However, they can be even worse at times. There are several different levels of anime fandom, different terms that people have to understand to become part of the community, and reasons why anime fans can totally suck sometimes. Narutards. These groups of people are like rats. You can easily <laughs> step on the <laughs> Uh, laughter break. We're professionals. <laughs> For the record, it's not easy to step on a rat. <laughs> and when you do, they do die. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can easily step on them, but they just won't die. Narutards are Naruto fans to the extreme. They have Naruto posters, Naruto action figures, and the worst part is that they think they are anime fans. They are very wrong because they cannot be anything but a Naruto fan. They are knowledge consists of the many ninja jitsus and special attacks from the series, along with exact fight scene narrations. Narutards can also coincide with the anime music video community when they make fan videos with Linkin Park songs playing to an episode of Naruto, really bad Windows movie maker editing, or a slideshow. Pokemon fans or Poke nerds. Sometimes anime can branch out to a younger audience, and this is one of those times where you wish children would just go die. <laughs> The best part about this is he's complaining about the fucking video game. It's not an anime. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, just to let our listeners know, I'm reading this blind, so when I burst out the laughter, it's just you because... Never, you never read the original? Uh, no, I did, but it was, it was, it was quite a few, like, I guess a year or so ago? It was like a year and a half ago, yeah. Yeah, so I don't really remember that he wished children would die because they play Pokemon, but <laughs> continuing... These annoying little children will suck you into playing a Pokemon game for the first time, and once you're hooked, you will never go back. These games are like drugs for high school kids and younger. Once you've won a game or two, you'll begin noticing something. First off, playing Pokemon is a kid's thing. After you hit 13, you are told you should stop playing these child's games and play things like Final Fantasy. However, yes, that Final has Fantasy is such an adult game. <laughs> however, that has nothing to do with you, and you re you really don't care because Pokemon fucking rules. In the end, though, it is just a video game to get your money by putting out a new glob of Pokemon every year. Another thing about Pokemon is the fact that almost every child on the planet now has a Game Shark or an action replay that, and will brag to you for hours on hours about his hacked level one hundred Arceus that he has. 
death nerds because I'm really a nerd about death. <laughs> These are kids who dress up as their favorite Death Note character, sit like L, and think they are awesome, and will talk to ours. Talk to? Do they just talk to a fucking clock? <laughs> yes. About what could slash would have happened if L hadn't died. Again, their knowledge consists of only Death Note information and below, thus making them not otaku or anime fan material. Female death nurse tend to dress like Misa or wear outrageous gothic clothes. Is easy complaining about this? <laughs> outrageous gothic clothing. Male death nerds are known for sitting like L, pretending to write people's names in a death note or actually carrying around a replica death note. Anime fans. These are the scariest kind of anime fandom, and unfortunately, they are the most prominent. Anime fans are the most prominent type of anime fandom, huh? <laughs> These are the people who are so obsessed with anime that they think they are awesome. First off, anime fans will spit out random Japanese words, usually with horrible pronunciation and terrible anime-style accents. Words that they randomly say are usually things like baka, or kawaii, or nye, or ugu. ugu. <laughs> These words are, of course, never said in Japan normally. Some advanced sentences are occasionally heard, and you should give them props for actually looking up Japanese phrases and not basing their knowledge of the Japanese language on anime. Another problem I've noticed with the anime community is their hostility to those with different opinions. A troll can easily get a reaction from an anime fan by saying such thing as anime sucks or you animu fag, you weeboo, and many other ridiculous phrases. The reactions end up being so ridiculous it makes true anime fans or otaku look bad. People post videos where they rant at the troll, explaining why anime is so amazing and why saying it sucks is like insulting them as a person. Anime to anime fans is like a religion, and people can get carried away with it just like they can with religions. Otaku. This is the pinnacle of anime fans. <laughs> I can't even say that with a group voice. <laughs> If you don't believe me, try telling a true otaku that anime sucks. He will most likely agree that some of them do and not continue the debate. An otaku knows what he or she is doing when it comes to anime. Most otaku have seen over 100 anime good benchmark and understand that not all popular anime such as Bleach or Naruto are really as good as anime such as Neon Genesis Evangelion and, oh, there's, that's the end of the sentence. Calling an otaku a weeaboo. He doesn't know how to spell weeaboo, Jesus Christ. <laughs> though, is more an insult. You're insulting him, her, as a person. He just said in the last paragraph how... Fucking A. Okay, otaku tend to have a lot of pride, understand <laughs> a lot about Japanese culture and the language, and have been to Japan at least once. They will own several anime action figurines as well. <laughs> otaku know where to go, and how to go about buying anime, manga, and anything. You, you go to the cashier and you hand them money. That's how you buy it. They are the ultimate anime shoppers. If you need to know how to get something at a decent price, ask an otaku and they tend to have the answers. Otaku are looked down on in Japan, however, and thus their pride level becomes even higher over there. The funny thing about being an otaku is that usually you have to originate from a Naruto or Death Nerd and watch new anime until you are at otaku status. The haters. Anime haters consist of people who, would care, who could care less, trolls, and downright mean people. The trolls are the nastiest out of all of them, but not the main problem. The reason trolls are not a big deal is because the only way they can attack an anime fan is by saying anime is bad. Or with You're, a knife. <laughs> your, your average anime fan may become engaged, enraged at such a thing, but most otaku do not, and therefore the trolls do no damage. The anime haters that don't care about it are usually not trying to hate anime. Instead, they just don't want any part of it and avoid it at all costs. When an anime fan boy or fan girl comes rushing at them and begins splurging all this anime knowledge at them, it can cause them to really not enjoy or care for anime at all. The downright mean people are usually almost trolls, but aren't considering themselves that. They tend to mutter under their breath or make fun of anime fans from afar. The difference between trolls and anime haters like these is that they will never attack you directly. Instead, they will make fun of you with a friend from a distance or talk about you behind your back. It's a very sneaky and mean way of hating on anime and anime fans. The funny thing is, a few of those haters will turn around, go home, and watch anime. They are sometimes secret fans. Conclusion to my rant. I think occasionally we need to take a step back and look at our progress as both people and as a community. If you have finished reading this entire thing, 
and then maybe you have just taken your step back. Yes, I will say that reading this has taken me backwards. <laughs> With so many flaws, how can we call ourselves a community? We we fighting, losing to trolls, making fun of ourselves, hating on others because of simple, small, useless things. It's just not right. Since when was it okay to act like little children? Even on the internet, there are levels of maturity, and I think that if you want to fight with other people, then you should do it with yourself, but then it wouldn't be fighting with other people. The anime music videos and anime community need to change, or at least develop a better perspective on things. Change can happen, but it can't just be one person. The whole community must change somehow with efforts from many. I think that if one pe person reads this, then perhaps I have helped that change happen a little bit faster. Thanks for reading my rant, and best of luck to you, your family, and your friends. And that was another CDVV book on tape. Today, this was a classic pr piece of writing by Otaku <laughs> Gray. About a year and a half ago, he wrote this rant, and we are pleased to be able to bring it to you today in audio form. That was a rant about the AMV and anime communities by Otaku Gray, as performed by Fallchild42 and In the Stow. Thank you, and good night.